Hello, I'm Mike Ramsey, the CEO of Ramsey Medical, the company that has introduced the PetMap blood pressure measuring device. I've worked in the field of blood pressure measurement and monitoring for over 37 years, and to the best of my knowledge, the PetMap is the very first non-invasive blood pressure device designed specifically to measure blood pressure in cats and dogs. One of the essential components of accurate blood pressure measurements is to select the appropriate size cuff and attach it appropriately snugly to the limb. With PetMap, our studies have shown that the correlations with intraarterial pressure are best when the cuff is applied to the forearm, both with the cat and with the dog. The next most preferential site is the tail, and the least preferential site is the hind foot. In selecting a cuff, make sure that one is selected which when wrapped around the limb, and I will use my finger here as a substitute for a limb, when wrapped around the limb, the index line, which is at the end of the cuff, falls within the optimum zone, which are the two dotted lines on the other side of the cuff. It must never be the case that the index line is outside of the boundary lines, as this will potentially result in very inaccurate readings. The snugness of the cuff is also important and will require a little bit of tension in order to compress the animal's hair so that there is not excess space between the wrapped cuff and the animal's actual skin. Typically, a cuff should be such, attached firmly enough to where tugging on it does not cause it to slip off of the limb. The pet map is a small handheld blood pressure device. Around the face of the device are a series of LEDs which are utilized to indicate what the current cuff pressure is and then at the end of a reading to indicate what the actual blood pressure and heart rate are. In the center of the device are two ovals. One of those ovals is labeled mode and this indicates depending on the color of the LED within the oval whether the device is set for a dog, a cat, or whether, if the amber light is there, the user should purge the device by pressing the deflate trigger. The deflate trigger is the red device on the back of the unit, which under normal circumstances would be in the closed position, in which you see it here. But to deflate the cuff, lock it into the open position, which it is now. However, for use, the device should always be in the closed position. In order to use the pet map, it must first be switched on by pressing the on-off button one time. The device will show in the upper window the cuff site which has been selected, and in the lower window the species which has been selected. In order to change that, the button on the right side of the instrument should be pressed and released. And by pressing and releasing sequentially, each of the individual cuff sites and each of the dog and cat can be selected. Never measure a blood pressure while the limb is being stood on or wagged in the case of the tail. In order to successfully measure a blood pressure, the animal must be at rest and must not be placing any weight on the limb on which the cuff is mounted. Once the appropriate species and cuff site have been selected, the next step is to plug the appropriate cuff into the inflation port at the back of the unit. Once the cuff has been plugged into the pet map and the cuff is properly attached to the proper limb, the device should be inflated by squeezing the bulb gently with one hand until it goes up to about 250 millimeters of mercury. This is a good starting place. The device should then be simply observed as it incrementally deflates, making its measurement. If the animal begins to move, uh, attempt to stabilize the animal and continue the determination. However, if the animal moves continuously, the determination should be aborted by squeezing the trigger on the back of the unit. Then, 
stabilize the animal, and again inflate the cuff to about 250 or 30 to 40 millimeters above the previous systolic pressure. When the device determines that an accurate reading is not possible, it will automatically deflate the cuff and give you a sweep of the peripheral LEDs to indicate that the determination has been aborted. After stabilizing the animal, readjusting the cuff, or doing whatever is necessary to improve the measurement situation, the device should then be inflated again and a new determination started. The blood pressure values are displayed by lighting a lead around the periphery of the gauge. In this case, as you can see, we have the 175 lead lit. That's our systolic. Systolic is always the highest. The lowest steady lead is the diastolic, and we can see that is 105. The flashing lead is always the heart rate, and the steady lead in between the diastolic and systolic is the mean arterial pressure at a 130 level here. It occasionally happens that the flashing heart rate happens to be the same value as the systolic, the mean, or the diastolic, in which case only three leads will be lit. One will be flashing. The order is still the same. The highest lead is the systolic, the lowest lead is the diastolic, and the middle lead is the mean. One of those leads will also be flashing, and that flashing lead is the heart rate. In order to demonstrate an actual measurement, I'll use my finger. Remember that the measurements made on the human finger are typically not accurate and should not be relied upon for any clinical purposes. Once the device is secured on my finger, I simply squeeze the bulb, and I'll take it up to 250, which is a good starting point, and we'll watch it come down in steps as it makes its measurement. During the process of measurement, the illuminated LED and the needle of the gauge should be within plus or minus five millimeters of each other under most circumstances. If they are not, then there is potentially a problem with the device in terms of its calibration. Now, the measurement has been completed, and this indicates that the blood pressure is 190 over 105. The flashing lead is at the 95 position, that is the heart rate, and the middle lead is at the 130 position, that would mean mean arterial pressure. Multiple readings should be made in each measurement session, so I'll do another one. During the determination, again observe that the needle stays with the LED, meaning that the device is in proper calibration. Once the second measurement is complete, I will turn the unit off and then switch it back on, and the device will give me what is referred to as a nominal session value. The nominal session value takes all of the measurements made in this particular measurement session and uses all of the information to derive a representative value for the measurement session itself. This is a good way in order to know what to chart on the animal since it combines the information from all of the readings into a single number. It is not an average, and it is a considerably more robust metric of the true blood pressure. The switch on the top right of the unit can be pressed and released in order to change the various species setting and cuff site setting. Notice that when I do this, the actual blood pressures shown change and typically they will be higher because they are optimized to agree with intraarterial pressure than those pressures which would be obtained if I put this device into the non-optimized setting 
which is with both of the interior LEDs extinguished. This is the reading that would most likely be obtained with a traditional oscillometric device or with a Doppler device. In addition to changing the optimization setting, the button on the top right is also used to change the intensity of the LED display. By pressing and holding continuously, the intensity of the LEDs is increased and decreased sequentially. When the desired intensity is displayed, simply release the button and the intensity will be held. The brightness of the LEDs determines to some extent the battery life and the brighter they are the more battery they use. The batteries are changed by, by turning the battery compartment release screw and lifting off the top of the device. One can see the two batteries within their compartment and in order to change them they must be extracted by turning the device upside down and occasionally a little thump may be required in order to get the battery out. Indicators for whether the plus or minus end of the battery should be up. On this side it's indicating that the minus end should be up so we will put the plus end down and the other one indicates that the plus end should be up so we will put it with the plus end up. Once the new batteries are inserted the battery cover should be reinstalled by first placing it over the device so that the buttons show through the top of the device, squeeze it into place and then gently tighten the adjustment screw until it is snug. Once that is done the device should always be powered on to confirm that good batteries and proper orientation was observed during the insertion. It's important to uh, keep the animal as calm as possible and do not let them place weight on the limb which uh, has the uh, cuff on it. Oftentimes the tail therefore is an easier choice because it uh, rarely has any weight on it. By stabilizing the cat and petting him, oftentimes multiple readings can be made without any uh, real motion artifact. However, if motion artifact begins and is sustained over a period of more than two or three seconds, the reading should be terminated. Measure one more. Okay, I'll turn the device off and then back on to get the nominal session value. And Barney's nominal session value is uh, 185 over 115, substantially lower than what it was in the vet's office. One method of getting blood pressure in animals, which I refer to as the stealth method, is to, before transporting the animal to the vet, Put the uh, cuff on the animal's forearm or on their tail and let them settle down within the cage. The blood pressure measurements made while the animal is still in the cage and before the uh, vet has had an opportunity to examine the animal and before the animal has uh, become uh, even more upset than uh, that caused by simply the transport uh, to the vet's office. Uh, in this way, multiple readings can be made which uh, are typically lower than would, what would be uh, achieved if the uh, animal were on the examining table and the vet was in plain view and uh, taking the blood pressures themselves. I hope you find the video informative and that your measurement of blood pressure in cats and dogs with PetMap will be an important part of your practice of veterinary medicine. Thank you.